only have 15 minutes so I don't think a lot of filming will be done in this clip but okay anyway Welcome back to another video. So as you would have seen from the title and the thumbnail, today we're going to be discussing my favorite K-dramas I watched in 2022. So this is part of like a three-part series because I have segmented the videos into K-dramas, C-dramas, and the last video will be on movies and other miscellaneous shows or series. For that last one, I'm still trying to decide on whether it should be a video or a short, depending on whether I can fit everything into a short. That one is pending. So in 2022, if I'm looking here, I'm looking at my screen, I watched a total of 73 K-dramas, including the ones that I DNF'd. I have shortlisted this list to include 21 K-dramas. For the best K-dramas I watched in 2021, I had 20. So this year we have one more, 21. <laughs> I was going to eliminate one just so that it could be 20, but I was like, why Why should I cut it? Isn't one more essentially more K-drama recommendations? So I decided not to. So let's start with the four stars first, and then we will work our way upwards to the five stars. And another disclaimer is that these K-dramas did not have came out in 2022. It's just the ones that I watched in 2022. These are my 21 favorites. I'm sad that I couldn't add one more so that it could be 22 favorite k dramas of 2022 but it's fine i already have a similar title for books 22 favorite books of 2022 so it's okay so anyway let's start the first one that we are going to be talking about is angel's last mission love the main characters are shin hae sun and kim myung soo it's about dan who is an angel and he's also a troublemaker and an optimist Yeon Seo is a ballerina who does not believe in love. Something happened so she couldn't do ballerina. She used to do it and then she stopped because of the thing that happened. Dan then receives a mission. If he succeeds, he can return to heaven. His mission is to find true love for Yeon Seo, but Dan soon falls in love with her. I gave this 4 stars because it's so... It's so cute. It's about Yeon Seo's trauma as well and how Kim Dan just comes in with like the sunshine to her grumpiness because of that incident. So good. I cried watching this drama and it's just so good. The two main characters are people that I love. Like Shin Hye San was in Mr. Queen, which I loved. Also, it's in my 2021 K drama favorites. And L is like Puff Infinite. His acting is also really good. So it's just everything. Next one that I'm gonna talk about is the Red Sleeve. The main characters are Yi San, played by Lee Jun Ho, and Song Dok Im, played by Lee Se Young. So this one was a drama where I discovered Lee Jun Ho. He's part of 2PM, but I have never, ever heard of him. I wasn't even like a super hardcore stand of. And from 2PM, I only knew Taekyeon and Nikun. I believe this drama propelled him to suddenly be super famous also. I'm not sure if I'm correct, but that's what I believe. The main character's acting is so good. I have never seen him act before this. I've never heard of him before this, but his acting is so good. And we all know Lee Se Young's acting is good. Like, I've watched her in, was it Dr. John? So good. This is a historical drama, which I don't really like. But I really enjoy this. So this is set in the 18th century and it's actually like based on a true story. So it depicts a love story between King Jong Jo and royal concubine Ui Bin Song. Son Dok Im is a court lady. She gets involved with the crown prince Yi San and he falls in love with her. The crown prince eventually becomes King Jong Jo. It's like a super slow burn. He desires Dok Im to become his concubine but she refuses. Her reasons are actually like quite valid. I would say I have a a lot of comments for this one I wrote down in my notion page I understand it but it also makes me very frustrated because she essentially doesn't want to become a royal concubine because she knows as a court lady she knows of the hardships concubines face after becoming concubines the level of freedom is definitely much lesser than that of a court lady she wants to live her life freely which is not possible as a concubine she also knows that life of a royal concubine does not generally bring about happiness but yet she eventually does become the concubine of of King Jong Jo and it's about this whole slow burn love story and the slow burn really makes my heart ache my heart aches for them so much I want to talk about spoilers about this one briefly so let me just put a spoiler warning her life after becoming a royal concubine is really really super sad and it makes me understand why she fought so hard to not 
become a royal concubine even though she does return the feelings but I also inevitably felt very wishy-washy because it's like oh I don't want but then I also want I don't want but then I also want you know it's like there's constant rejections back and forth and I know like it's based on a true story but I don't know and also like how the ending can be interpreted differently whether or not you want to believe it's a sad or happy ending because there was like 17 episodes instead of 16 I really admire the screenwriters for portraying this drama in such a manner I believe it's essentially like choose your own ending but I don't know man I don't think I rewatched this because of how sad it gets at the end even though the slogan was so good and there was this particular bath scene <laughs> like okay she was supposed to like help him bathe and then she accidentally falls into the water and then they have this like romantic moment but I guess it's difficult to fall but it doesn't really look accidental the way she fell oh I really it's a drama that made me reflect a lot based on the number of comments that I wrote on my page this drama really made me discover Lee Jun Ho one of my favourite actors now and it's such a slow burn historical drama that I would recommend you to watch especially if you like watching historical dramas and <laughs> my 15 minutes are up so I have to go but I'll continue updating probably in a different angle in a different day okay hi we're back with more k-drama recommendations it's definitely a different day i think you can tell by the shirt that's inside that has changed color the next k-drama that i'm going to talk about is rookie cops played by kang daniel who plays wee sung hyun and che Subin, who plays ko and kang so this one is about Wee Sung Hyun, who is a freshman at the police university and he ranks at the top of his class, he is full of justice. Ko Won Kang is also a freshman at the police university but she entered because of a person that she likes. And this one is basically a very nice romance. You get to learn about how police university students study the curriculum and things like that it's kind of like a uni drama because it's police university right so it's like all their different issues and their romances their friendships and it's just really cute the next one is juvenile justice juvenile justice is really really underrated in my opinion it's played by kim hesu who plays sim Eun sok kim mu yor who plays cha tae ju lee sung min who plays kang won jong and lee jong Eun who plays na gen hi there's like a lot more characters in this but the ones that I just named are the Yonhua District Court Juvenile Criminal Division judges. In my opinion, the main cast is actually the four that I just mentioned. So this one, we get to see what happens in the juvenile court which means that those are crimes committed by minors and they are getting more violent and cruel. Because they are minors, usually they can escape from any serious types of punishment. Sim Eun Sok is an elite judge with a personality that seems unfriendly to others and she hates juvenile criminals. She gets assigned to a local juvenile court and there she breaks custom and administers her own ways of punishing the offenders. This one is really quite interesting because you can see exactly how much she hates these juvenile offenders even though she is quite an impartial judge I would say it's also about how you can see each case how each offender offends and why they offend and it's about how the court tries to make them repent and see their ways so there's a lot of different cases and it's quite sad sometimes and quite heartwarming sometimes really underrated drama please give it a watch the next drama is When the Camellia Blooms this one is played by Gong Hyo Jin who plays Dong Baek Kang Han who who plays Huang Yong Shik. So those two are the main characters. And this one is about Dong Baek who is a single mother living in a really small town called Ong San. She runs this bar restaurant called Camellia while also taking care of her son Pir Gu who is played by Kim Kang Hoon. Oh my god. The people of Ong San frequently gossip about Dong Baek because they feel like a single mother running a bar restaurant is like apparently a super bad thing or something. And also because Dong Baek is like a super pretty beautiful single mother so they kind of like jealous of her as well. She grew up as an orphan, is a single mother and runs a bar where many of the men in Ong San frequent which is also why the wives of Ong San like to gossip about her. Regardless of what the locals may whisper about Dong Baek, local police officer Huang Yong Shik is deeply in love with her. Meanwhile, Dong Baek's ex-boyfriend Kang Jong Ril suddenly reappears in her life. He is a famous baseball player that hid their relationship when they dated. While Dong Baek tries to find happiness, something truly sinister lurks in the background because there is a serial killer that is in Ong San and Dong Baek may be a target. It has really small town cozy vibes but at the same time it reminds me 
me of a cozy murder mystery because you have this super cozy town and all the characters living in it but at the same time you also have this serial killer lurking in the background so sometimes it's like super cozy sometimes it's like oh my god don't beg please like run someone is out for you those kind of things the sun Kim Kang Hoon in here is quite young. This was in 2019. It's just so cute. Like, oh my god. The interactions between the mom and the son is really cute. And the small town vibes are really great as well. I also cried while watching this drama. I really love the emphasis on family and the small town bonds, as I mentioned. I also forgot to mention that I cried while watching Juvenile Justice. Next drama, Through the Darkness. I also feel like this is really quite underrated. I didn't really hear anyone talking or hyping up about it. This one is a story of criminal profilers who struggle to read the minds of serial murderers. It's played by Kim Nam Gil who plays Song Ha Yong, Jin Song Kyu who plays Kuk Yong Su, and Ryo Woon who plays Jong Woo Ju. They are under the crime behavior analysis team. This one is actually based on a non-fiction novel by the profiler Kwon Lee Young and writer Go Nam Woo. It's based on like a time several years earlier when criminal profilers weren't even like a thing yet. So Song Ha Young is a criminal profiler. He is calm and has charisma. He digs up cases and looks deeply into the human mind. This drama has a focus on the discussion of criminal profiling and how they use it to solve cases. With these kind of thriller crime dramas, you also have all these different crimes and all these different cases and all these different characters that you will meet and it's really super interesting. I couldn't stop watching and it's really really good. This next one is super super popular so I don't think you would be surprised to hear me talk about this on this list and that drama is All of Us Are Dead. So this one was really really trending and so hyped everywhere on Netflix and things like that. There are really a lot of main characters but I guess I'll just name the main four. So this is played by Park Ji Woo who plays Nam On Jo, Yoon Chan Yong who plays Lee Chong San, Cho Yi Hyun who plays Choi Nam Ra and Lo Mon who plays Lee Soo Hyuk. So this one is about a virus outbreak that occurs at Hyosan High School. This virus turns people into human eating zombies. The students must fight for their lives so they look for a way out. Nam On Jo and Lee Chong San have been friends since they were children and they are two of the students trapped in the classroom and surrounded by flesh-eating zombies. It's largely based in the school but the virus has also spread outside as well so there's also this story outside of how people are trying to escape and the Korean military is trying to isolate the outbreak and protect the country from an even larger outbreak. And it's about how which characters will survive, which will not betrayal, friendships, romance that blossoms. I'm super excited for season 2 because I think it was confirmed that time. Next is Tale of the Nine Tailed. I somehow put off watching this for some reason, probably because I wasn't really interested in the two main characters but then I realised that Kim Bom was in this and then I was like, I have to watch it. Okay, this is played by Lee Dong Wook who plays Lee Yeon, Jo Boa who plays Nam Ji Ah and Kim Bom who plays Lee Rang. Lee Yeon was once the mountain spirit of Baek Dudegan. He sacrificed his life as a mountain god to resurrect the life of the woman he loved, Alm. Leon now lives his life as a nine-tailed fox in human form and he has lived this way for hundreds of years. Nam Jia works for a TVC station as a PD of documentaries. She seeks out stories and the supernatural. Back in 1999, her parents were involved in a car accident in Yeowu Goge. She remembers a man that saved her in that accident. Now Nam Jia reviews CCTV footage from a wedding hall where the bride disappeared. She sees the man that saved her walking out the wedding hall with a red umbrella. His name is Leon. Lee Rang is actually Leon's brother. So this one is a fantasy romance K-drama and okay I mean the, the romance was fine but honestly for me this one the best part was actually Lee Rang. I cried watching this also. Lee Rang and this little kid like they have this sub story and I find that so cute so wholesome. So Lee Rang is actually like this kind of bad character. He kind of has a grudge against his brother for abandoning him because of the woman that he loves. So he's kind of like the villain in this story but oh my god, when the villains look so good? He's the only villain that I really understand and love and support. Just really watch it for Kim Bob. <laughs> Next is today's webtoon. It's played by Kim Se Jong who plays On Maum, Daniel Choi who plays Sok Ji Hyung, and Nam Yoon Soo who plays Gu Jun Yong. This one is about On Maum who used to be a judo athlete. Her life revolved around the sport, but this particular injury ended her career in judo. She then got her first job in the webtoon editorial department because she really loves reading webtoons, especially after her injury. Because she only had experience with sports as being like a professional judo athlete, she has a hard time adjusting 
adjusting to her job as a webtoon editor and the people at her work because it's like her first office job but through all the difficulties she faces she grows as a person and a webtoon editor the colouring and everything is super beautiful and I really love Sejong's acting I mean she acts so well in any drama that she's in but this one she really portrays the hardships that her character faces really well you want to root for her because it's like her first office job she's like struggling with all these different obstacles that come her way and things like that so Gu Jun Yong is another new colleague that comes in as well but he is much more used to the job and he finds that the work he's doing is like not really that worth his time so he's kind of like a, oh why am I here I should be utilizing my time and effort elsewhere things like that but he also kind of has some kind of character growth while they are working as webtoon editors they have to work with webtoon authors and that's where all the different characters come in as well all these different webtoon authors have different stories for their webtoons and it's like how the stories are different authors are different the struggles that they face might be the same but some particular challenges might be different things like that really good story but i felt like it dropped a bit towards the end especially with how they dealt with a few characters in this but the acting is really all super good one particular character in this other than the ones that I've already known really shown for me and that is Kim Do Hoon who plays Shin De Leo. his character really goes through a lot and goes through a lot of character development and I find that he portrayed it really really well and this drama made me discover this actor and want to support his works as well in the future so I have to sadly break this up again because oh my god these few days are really I have no time to film everything so these are the few K dramas so far and I will continue on a different day probably in a different angle with more K-dramas. Hi, so we are back again <laughs> to continue talking about my K-dramas. The next one I'm going to talk about is actually Salon Dinabi, also known as Fly Butterflies. This one is actually a drama that I came across on TikTok. And I was like, this looks quite interesting. Let me go and check it out. And especially because Choi Daniel plays in this, as well as Kim Hyang Gi, both are actors and actresses that I have watched in previous K dramas before. So I was like thinking, it seems interesting. The people that I know, so let's just go and watch it. And it's so good. Oh my gosh. This is played by Kim Hyang Gi, as mentioned, who plays Ki Pum, Daniel Choi, who plays Kwang Su, and Tak. Jongwu who plays Mu Yor. There are more main characters but these are the three that I'm just gonna talk about in this video. This one is set in a hair salon called Fly High Butterfly and it follows the lives of the workers and their customers there. Kipem is I would say our main character and she is in her early 20s and she works at the salon as an assistant intern and she works with three other assistant interns and one of them is Mu Yor who is played by Park Jongwu. She works hard but she has a hard time dealing with customers she's just generally not a sociable person she's never learned how to be sociable to customers and things like that and so she's just struggling Kwang Su is a hairstylist at Fly High Butterfly he is enthusiastic at his job and he works there with the hair salon director and another hairstylist this one is really super cute especially because of Kipam's struggles and how everyone is trying to help her out and make her have a better time working there really cute and there's even a budding romance and the romance is freaking cute oh my gosh just believe me when i say that the romance is like the freaking cutest thing and i cried while watching this drama and it's also really interesting because you get to learn more about the lives of hairstylists and what they have to deal with in terms of customers what they can and shouldn't say their struggles of the job and how long it takes to actually become a hairstylist that is salon dinabi and it was a great TikTok recommendation. This next one is also a super super popular K-drama so I don't think you would be surprised that I'm putting it in this list and that drama is 2521 starring Kim Tae-ri who plays Nahido, Nam Joo Hyuk who plays Big Lee Jin, Bona who plays Ko Yoo Rim, Choi Hyun Ook who plays Moon Ji Woong and Lee Joo Myung who plays Ji Seung Wan. This drama is like a representation of youth itself. It's about fencing and a love story. <laughs> if you don't know what this drama is about, Nahido is a member of a high school fencing team but due to the South Korean financial crisis, the high school fencing team gets disbanded. Getting through all the difficulties, she becomes a member of the Sabre Fencing National Team. The South Korean financial crisis also causes Becky Jin's father's business to go bankrupt and this leads to a life change for Becky Jin from living the life of a wealthy person to a poor person and now he has to work part-time jobs like delivering newspapers. It's really about the interactions as friends and youth. Fencing really plays like a huge role in this drama and you see Kim Dae-ri progressing and improving, slowly slowly getting to the top, things like that. 
The colouring in this drama was really good. The songs in this drama were really good. Oh my god, if you watch this drama, please listen to Go by Tokyom from Seventeen. He's super good. Every time I hear it, I'm reminded of youth itself. And the interactions with each other is really makes you reminiscent of high school days. And it's about how their story has to slowly progress into adults, how their love story progresses as well. You really want to root for Kim Terry and her fencing journey. I also cried watching this drama. So now we are progressing into the 4.25 slash 4.5 star dramas already. And the first one is If You Wish Upon Me, starring Ji Chang Wook who plays Yoon Gyo Rae, Song Dong Yi who plays Kang Tae Shik, and Su Young who plays So Yeon Ju. Yoon Gyo Rae's life has been really tough. He lived in an orphanage and also spent time in a juvenile detention center in prison. He struggles to live a normal life basically. But due to an incident, he has been ruled by the court to volunteer at a hospice and there he works with the volunteer team leader Kang Tae Shik and the nurse So Yeon Ju. It's really about Yoon Gyo Rae's character development as he progresses from this badass offender that has been released into society trying to turn over a new leaf slowly coming to realize that people around him do care about him and he doesn't have to put up walls around himself and it's just so cute it's just a grumpy trying to act tough kid because he has been betrayed or like abandoned by too many people when he was younger it's just really great to see him have this found family in this hospice and how he eventually comes to play a major role there it's just also this romance between Jun Gyo and So Yeon and his interactions with Kang Tae Shik is like a father-son kind of dynamic and it's just oh it's so cute I also really cried watching this drama I don't think it's a unique plot because I feel like I've either read or watched something in a similar vein to this but it's really more about the bonds and the character development between each character in this story that really shines through so yeah please watch this drama and get ready to cry because it's about oh i never even tell you what this story is about oh my god it's inspired by the ambulance wish foundation which originally started in the netherlands and the charity program grants wishes to terminally ill patients and that's where the sad part comes in because each patient is eventually going to die but you are trying to help them fulfill their last wish before they leave you know and it's just so sad and so heartbreaking but it's so good next drama is 365 repeat the year and this one is kind of like a dystopia sci-fi kind of drama this is played by Lee Jun Hyuk who plays Ji Hyung Ju, Nam Ji Hyun who plays Shin Ga Hyun, and Kim Ji Soo who plays Lee Shin. So these three are the main characters, I would say. This one is about 10 people who dream of having a perfect life. They travel back in time to one year ago. They are able to reset their lives there, but mysterious cases take place that threatens their lives. Ji Hyung Ju is a veteran detective. He has seven years of work experience after going back in time one year ago he enjoys his life but he also learns that they end up in mysterious cases those people like him who travel back in time and so he tries to reveal the truth behind that on the other hand Shin Ga Hyun is a webcomic writer she has published her popular webcomic series for the past three years and is a workaholic a sensitive perfectionist but one day she has a sudden accident leaving her paralyzed her legs are paralyzed she also wants to reset her life and it's about how things progressively get worse from there and it's really a drama that I couldn't stop watching because you have these 10 people who want to reset their lives and you have their own stories of why they want to reset, what happens when they reset. It's also about the cases that they get involved in, why these 10 people are able to reset, why this resetting thing has came about in the first place. It's really like a sci-fi kind of drama and it's really good, like a thriller almost. So if you want a drama that will make you not want to put it down, go for this one. School 2021, I cried watching this drama. This one, we have Kim Yo Han who plays Gong Ki Jun, Cho Yi Hyun who plays Jin Ji Won, Chu Yong Wu who plays Jong Yong Ju, Hwang Borum Bill who plays Kang So Young. So these four are the main characters. This is part of the whole school series. We have school 1 to 4, school 2013, who are you, school 2015, school 2017, and now school 2021. This one follows the lives and growth of students at a vocational high school, including Gong Ki Jun and Jin Ji Won. Gong Ki Jun was once a Taekwondo player and he won the bronze medal at the National Athletics Competition, but he had a serious ankle injury. Around this time, his father's business went bankrupt as well, so it's like double whammy. Gong Ki Jun quit 
Taekwondo and you entered the vocational high school, this school is not your usual kind of school because it's a vocational high school. They kind of have to learn about design, architecture, things like that. They have to do projects and things like that. And it's essentially like a school romance. Also youth because you see them experience issues that you kind of experience when you're in high school, what you want to do in future after you graduate, whether you have a plan or not, things like that. You have like your budding romance and it's just so cute and I cried watching this. Yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. It's just a really good drama. Last two 4.5 star dramas Link Eat Love Kill I also cried while watching this This one is played by Yeo Jin Gu who plays Eun Ge Hoon and Moon Ga Yong who plays No Da Hyun About 20 years ago Eun Ge Hoon's twin sister went missing and he is now an adult and works as a chef Eun Ge Hoon decides to open a restaurant where his twin sister disappeared and One day he suddenly shares emotions with No Da Hyun emotions like joy, sorrow and pain and meanwhile No Da Hyun is a woman without any luck in her life and she has especially bad luck with men. This one has a big focus on food, the romance between the two main characters, as well as this mystery going on in the background of what exactly happened to the twin sister and who was behind it because it's also like kind of a relatively small town. Everyone in town kind of knows each other since a very long time ago. The relationships within each family is really cute as well and that's all I'm gonna say about this one. Next is Love All Play. Park Joo Hyun plays Park Tae Young. Che Jong Hyop plays Park Tae Joon. Park Ji Hyun plays Park Joon Young. Kim Mo Joon plays Yook Jong Hwan. And So Ji Hye plays Lee Yoo Min. This is also a sports K drama about badminton. Park Tae Young was a promising badminton athlete, but due to an incident, she left the sport. And three years later, she decides to join the badminton team, Eunice. Her life once revolved entirely around badminton, and now she's finally back in this sport that she loves playing. Park Tae Joon is a badminton player. He views the sport as nothing more than a job to him. He gets cut by the City Hall team and signs with Team Eunice and there the two main characters meet. So this is really focused on badminton as well as their romance. It's really exciting because you can see like all the badminton matches, like the competitions because there's also the Eunice badminton team and the uh, other teams that they play against and how you come to root for the Eunice team and it's just... Oh so good i couldn't stop watching it that was all the 4.5 k dramas and now we move on to the five star k dramas first five star k drama was technically a rewatch but i have never fully watched this drama when i first watched it i kind of just joined a few episodes in because i saw my family watching it and then i just continued watching from there so this was technically like a rewatch but also my first full watch and that drama is prison playbook so good oh my gosh even on the second watch right the parts that i've seen before they still are super good this is like a comedy drama and it's really so funny but also so heartbreaking Park K Su plays Kim Jae Hyuk Jong Kyung Ho plays Lee Jun Ho Crystal plays Kim Ji Ho there's really a lot more characters but I'm not gonna mention them because there's really too many but there are really a lot of characters in this because it's about inmates and prison officers life in prison basically the story of prisoners and staff at a prison Jae Hyuk is the best relief pitcher in Korea he was going to go to the US to sign a contract with the major league team but one night he hears his sister screaming and sees a man running out of her apartment Jae Hyuk and the man get into a physical struggle Jae Hyuk strikes the man with a rock so he receives a one year prison sentence for using excessive force so he must now adapt to life in prison his friend Jun Ho also works in the prison as an officer he kind of protects Jae Hyuk from there and he's a really beloved baseball player so he has like a big reputation and everything like that so even when he goes in everyone treats him really well because of how good he plays for the country he meets different kinds of inmates in prison so some are good some are not so good so there's kind of like two opposing sides and each inmate that we have a greater focus on has their own stories and it's really about their stories with their lives and how they struggle to get out of this habit of reoffending or even get out of prison permanently things like that it's really sad because you see this inmate for example he gets released but then a few episodes later he comes back in because he re-offended also it's about how Jaehyuk is trying to get his sentence reduced as well as a certain few other characters are also trying to get their sentences reduced so that they can get out into society faster but a lot rides on that so the process is very long and it kind of like drains hope and everything so what really shown through in this drama was the bonds between the inmates and the prison officers as well inmates between inmates it's so cute i don't know if this is how it's actually like in actual prisons i wouldn't think so but it's kind of like a story that i want to believe in because most officers really care for their inmates even though they may have like this facade 
and they try to help them out, try to get them to stay out of trouble, try to protect those that may be potentially bullied by those with greater power. You also see certain progressions, character developments of certain characters, so they may come in being like this villain, trying to attack people, or just trying to stay away from people, and then they slowly, slowly kind of build bonds with the inmates staying with them in the cell, such that they completely become a different person for the better, and it's just oh, so cute, but also the ending is super realistic, so it kind of breaks your heart a bit, because it really touches on how you're really rooting for these characters to do better and not re-offend but they still do because their past habits are really hard to get out of. It's really a super good drama. The director of this also directed Hospital Playlist and the Reply series so it's really a really good director and the story is good, the characters acting are good, just so good. Next is Dear M. I binged this drama in a day if that testifies to how good this is. This one was really like a completely unexpected 5 star for me. I wasn't really expecting anything and then whew, it was so good Takesu plays Ma Jua Ro Jong Ui plays So Ji Min Wu Da Vi plays Hwang Bo Yong Jae Hyun plays Chan Min Ho Bae Hyun Song plays Park Han and Lee Jin Hyuk plays Gil Mok Jin this one is kind of like a mystery university drama romance also the mystery comes from when all these students attend this particular class and this particular person named M wrote something on the community board of So Yeon University's website it was about how the person wanted to confess to their crush by the end of the semester or something like that everyone was trying to guess who is M and who the person might like and it's really about the stories between each student so some of them are couples some of them form friendships it's about essentially this mystery behind who is M and it's really binge worthy because I binged everything in one day. Again, university dramas, you have like the youth aspect, you have their struggles, you have their joys in learning and it's really just a super cute drama that I would recommend you to watch if you want to get into the feels of being in university as well as finding out who exactly is M who wants to confess to their crush. Okay, last three dramas I think I will leave for another clip because I have to leave already but we managed to get quite a bit of dramas mentioned in this particular clip. So last three dramas will be in the next clip so yeah i'll see you there okay we are down to our last three k dramas these are the best of the best that i've watched in 2022 the first one is tomorrow kim hee-sun plays kuryon rowan plays Choi jun ung lee su hyok plays Park Jung Gil, Yoon Ji On plays Lim Ryong Gu. <sighs> this one, I cried while watching it a lot of times. It kind of felt like almost every episode I cried because it was so sad. And this drama really has a lot of trigger warnings. So just beware if you are intending to watch this. Tomorrow is about Choi Jun Woo, who, who is looking for a job but it's hard for him to get hired. And one night, he accidentally encounters Grim Reapers Gu Ryon and Im Ryong Gu. The two Grim Reapers belong to a crisis management team and Gurion is the leader and Lim Ryonggu is a member. Their objective is to save suicidal people. Eventually, Jun Wong gets recruited into this team because of some particular special circumstances so he's working there temporarily. Again, it's about how each episode, um, almost every episode, you encounter new characters who are suicidal and you see their reasons as to why they want to commit suicide. Each character has their own backstories as well, like literally the members of the crisis management team. It's really sad and I remember sobbing over a particular episode involving a dog and it's just yeah it's super sad but super good if you are able to handle the trigger warnings please watch this a drama called tomorrow second one is a super popular netflix drama basically this drama is a business proposal kim sejong plays shin hari and hyo sop plays kang Temu. kim ming yu plays cha sung hoon and sol ina plays jin young so wow this one really blew up everywhere i first saw clips of it on tiktok and then eventually it just exploded everywhere <laughs> particularly sejong's that particular scene with Samantha and Rachel. Oh my god. <laughs> Samantha and Rachel Samantha and Rachel? Samantha and Rachel. Samantha and this is a rom-com basically. Shin Hari is a single woman and works for a company. She has a male friend and has held a crush on him for a long time but she learns that her friend has a girlfriend. She feels sad and so decides to meet her friend Jin Young So who is a daughter of a Chaebol family. She then asks Shin Hari to take her place in a blind date and even offers some money for her time. 
So Hari accepts the friend's offer. She goes out on the blind date, impersonating as her friend while trying her best to get rejected from this blind date. And so she meets Kang Temu, who is the CEO of the company where she works. He is a workaholic and he's annoyed that his grandfather sets up blind dates for him. So he decides to marry the next woman he meets at the blind date so that this particular string of blind dates will end. And that woman is Shin Hari. That's where the story starts and from there it just carries on and it's just this super funny, super romantic drama. It's just and particularly the two second leads shined in this drama as well because their chemistry was so good Kim Min Kyu and Sorina that they almost outshined the main leads and it's just so good oh my gosh if you're looking for a very fun time and you don't want to take anything too seriously you just want to have a good laugh while watching a good plot and good chemistry just watch business proposal and okay the last drama it is any guesses i don't think it's possible but you can try to guess for those who know my taste the last k drama that i'm gonna be talking about is ghost the doctor rain plays cha young min kim bom plays go sung tak cha young min is a genius doctor but he's arrogant and selfish one day he gets involved in an unexpected case due to this unexpected case his spirit possesses another doctor's body and these two doctors are complete opposites with opposite personalities and medical abilities so the other doctor is obviously kim bomb go sung tak again their chemistry with each other is so good their bromance it's also a bit funny because of like the situation that happens but it's also really heartwarming also heartbreaking touching because of how in this drama you encounter all the different patients and you see spirits they come to learn about each particular spirit's story and how they ended up here what's their current state like things like that really super good drama I think I watched this in January I still remember it really well and I remember that after I finished watching it I went to watch the behind the scenes because it was just so good the bromance between the two main leads I really like this kind of fantasy heartwarming story dramas and these kind of stories really hold a special place in my heart so with that we have actually come to the end of my best K-dramas of 2022 comment down below what was your best K-drama of 2022 give me some recommendations as well if you're still watching please comment a TV emoji because it's K-dramas look out for the next few parts of this series which are the best movies plus series as well as miscellaneous shows as well as the best C dramas I've watched in 2022. I hope you're having a great day and a great week wherever or whenever you're watching. Remember to stay hydrated. If you enjoyed this video, please give this video a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel for more of such content. Yeah, I'll see you in my next video. Bye!